Okay, unit four, assignment number four's notes. So in class, we already started uh, the top part where we did the GCF. Then we made the area model and the diamond problem in order to factor. So in other words, we were factoring completely. So if you were absent um, Monday morning, November 28th, you probably want to pause the video and get all this information down right here as this is the part of the notes that we went over in class. Obviously, you won't have it live, so you'll miss out on a lot of the, uh, the descriptions uh, that we had. But now we're going to go down to the bottom part here where we're going to be solving for x in overlapping similar triangles. Okay, so remember when you have similar triangles that here's the idea on what we want to do in this problem. I'm going to type it out here. So this is the big idea. When similar triangles. Okay. The big idea is this. You're going to set up two ratios. And ratios are just a fancy word for saying fractions. So you're going to set up two fractions and then cross multiply to solve. Okay. So with the similar triangles. So the first thing that you want to do in this problem is, is that you want to identify with the, the triangles that are actually similar in this problem. And you guys could see that there's really only two triangles in this picture. One of them is triangle JLK which I'm outlining in yellow. And then the other one is this inside triangle, which is triangle JTU, which I'm outlining in blue. So one suggestion that I would have, which would help you see things better is, is that when you have this concept of overlapping triangles, and what that means is that you're gonna have one triangle inside another triangle. I would highly suggest that you take the two triangles and redraw them um, as separate to one another. This, by, by doing this simple act, and this doesn't take long at all, by redrawing the triangles so that, you, that they are completely separate from one another, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to much more clearly see which parts of the two triangles correspond with one another, which then will allow you to set up your ratios, and you need two ratios, fractions, which will allow you to cross multiply and solve. So you can see I have labeled the corners, the vertices of the blue triangle, JTU, and the yellow triangle, JLK. And now I'm going to fill in the length. So the left side, the vertical side of the blue triangle is 27. The horizontal side, in other words, JDU, is represented by negative 4 plus 4x. And then the hypotenuse side, assuming this is a right triangle, I'm not too sure if it is, but we'll call it that, T to U, is 36. In the yellow triangle, J to L is 72. J to K is 64. And K to L is 96, okay? So this is going to allow me to set up my um, triangles uh, or my fractions. Now, I'm always going to write the fractions of, I'm always going to put the blue triangles values on the numerator. And then I'm going to put the yellow triangles values on the denominator. You don't have to do that. You could flip-flop it, but you have to be consistent. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to take 27 from the blue triangle, and that corresponds with 72. So one of my ratios is going to be the ratio 27 over 72. Okay, then I'm going to write another one. I'm going to take the 36 from the, from the blue triangle. That corresponds with 96 in the yellow triangle. So another ratio is 36 over 96. And then I actually have a third ratio here, which would be negative 4 plus 4x over 64. So negative 4 plus 4x over 64. Okay, now, 
remember the idea is when I have similar triangles and I want to find the value of x, let's say, a missing piece, I need to set up two ratios. Now, I have three ratios right here, but and then I'm going to cross multiply. So what you want to do is out of these three ratios, you're going to pick two of them. Now, obviously, you want to pick the one that involves the unknown variable. So I'm going to pick the ratio negative 4 plus 4x over 64. And then the other ratio, I'm going to pick either one, red or blue. It doesn't really matter which one. I'll go ahead and pick, uh, I'll go with red. So I'll pick the 27 over 72 for no particular reason at all. Okay, so then when triangles are similar, it means their ratios are equal to each other. So actually all three of these ratios are equal to each other. And then I use cross multiplying in order to solve this out. So I'm going to multiply the 64 with the 27. I'm going to multiply those two together. So I'm multiplying 64 with 27. I'm going to write down that result, whatever that is. I'm using a calculator off screen, so don't think I'm doing this in my head. 1,728. And then I'm going to cross multiply the other way. In other words, I'm going to multiply the 72 with the quantity negative 4 plus 4x. Okay, so I'm going to cross multiply this way. Now, I have to distribute the 72. So I have to multiply the 72 with the negative 4. That's going to be negative 288. And then I also have to multiply the 72 with the uh, plus 4x. And that's going to give me plus 288x. Okay, now the idea is, is that when you cross multiply, the two results are always equal to each other. So I set the two results equal to each other. And then I use algebra to solve. So I'm going to add 288 to both sides of the equation. What that is going to do is, is cancel out the 288s on the right. And that's going to give me a new equation, which would be 1728 plus 288 gives me 2016. That was a good year, 2016. That's going to be equal to 288x. And then to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 288. And whatever that equals, that is going to be my answer for the value of x. And it turns out to be 7, exactly. So I get x is equal to 7. Okay, so that would be an example right there of how I'm going to solve for x when I have overlapping triangles. Remember, one of the key things that makes things very clear for you is to simply separate the two similar triangles, redraw them, then that easily allows you to write your ratios. You only need two ratios, which allows you to cross multiply to solve.